It's this really, really like crazy mesh of everything that just makes K-pop K-pop. And I have no idea what I'm saying, but people who know what I'm saying totally understand what I am saying. Have fun editing that. <laughs> hey, what's up you guys? My name is Amber Lou, and uh, I'm a K-pop star. I am currently 27. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, California in a cute little suburb called West Hills. I grew up just, you know, playing sports and, you know, studying and uh, chilling. I am right now in Los Angeles, California, but now I'm in the city in K-Town. K-Town, woo woo. I hang out in my house. <laughs> I like skating, I uh, like running a lot, going on hikes. I like going to escape rooms, um, wherever they may be. I, I would literally drive two hours to go to an escape room. I grew up in a musical family. Uh, everybody was musical except me. <laughs> They're all really talented and I'm just like, um, I'll take a couple drum lessons and I'll quit. I started getting involved in church and I was like, oh, this is pretty fun and there was no vocalist at the time too, so I decided like, oh, I'll sing too. It was more of a hobby and an outlet just for me to, you know, ha other than studying, because I always just studied. Music was always just on, on the side. I feel like with every artist, it's just about how the art grows and how you evolve as an artist. And I think that's what I've definitely put into my, like, my, my newest EP, like X, like everything is just always different. That actually even came naturally. I just, it just somehow became all different. Ooh, okay, that's cool. Don't tell me all your reasons you keep shouting now. I'm sick and With my skills that I have right now, what can I do to give back to the world? This is a very, not, I don't wanna say like it's a selfish job, it's a very self-centered job. You receive a lot of love. Like, so it's like, what can I do to give back to that? The world is really screwed up right now. There's a lot of problems and it's just like, I can't, I know I can't solve all of them, but I do want to solve all of them. What can I do right now that can put some positivity back into the world? If I had to do a K-pop for dummies crash course, makeup, aesthetics, the culture, the most identifiable one is probably dance and choreography. The whole like point dance. I think there is an oversaturation of award shows. Everybody wants to be the best, but because you are not number one, you're nothing. Like that misconception needs to go away. Music is more than just being top of the charts. It's about creating connection and living in the moment while listening to that track or watching that performance. The one thing that came out has definitely changed, my confidence in my legs. <laughs> my stylist, a really good friend of mine was like, hey Amber, I want to put you in shorts and I'm like, how short are they? She's like, all the way up here. And I'm like, ah, fine, I trust you. Pretty sexy, just saying. I really like that chameleon-ish. Chameleonism, is that a word? Chameleonism? <laughs> it is now, chameleonism. <laughs> There's a bunch of Korean festivals um, that happened in LA. My best friend was like, hey, come out to K-Town and chill. I was, well, I was 14 at this time. I was just standing in the crowd. Would you like to audition? And I'm like, you're speaking Korean, friend, translate, please. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I was just like, might as well try. I knew that if I didn't take that chance, I would just be, I think it's gonna be like the one thing I regret in my life. My parents were both immigrants, so they did not live with stability and they worked really hard for me and my sister to have that stability because I've lived in such like a, like a safe environment. It's like, what if I did take a chance? What if I did take this risk? What happens if the odds are all against me? What could I, uh, if I still did it, what would happen? I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. I don't know what job is gonna come. I don't even know if I'm gonna have a job for the next six months. Yeah, the curiosity of just like, what's gonna happen tomorrow, I think is just so um, like, like, I don't know, exciting? Sad, but exciting, if that makes sense. I always have a day job and a side hustle. This industry is extremely up and down. I've been 
in dry seasons where I'm not making money for about like a year or two, or I'm barely breaking even. You always just have to, you know, bite your tongue and be like, nope, gotta work on this and I gotta work on this to pay rent. That's an unfair question. Oh, uh, my favorite K-pop artist, man. The easiest answer is Boa. She's the queen. Like you just, you just have to know that. Working in Korea, you're supported by a whole bunch of people and every decision is made for you. You can just wake up, show up, do your thing, go back to sleep, wake up the next place, do your thing. Just didn't really feel like a person. And and that that's kind of hard. And that was, it was, no, it was really hard, especially at a young age. I didn't know what was right or wrong. I just listened and I just did things. LA is definitely a different, Place. I just get to say yes or no. Honestly, I'm taking everything a day at a time. If I also get caught up in like thinking like, oh my gosh, I had all this and I lost all this and I don't have this now, like only gonna stress me out. I wanna enjoy life. I wanna date around. I wanna be spontaneous and take a trip. And I wanna be able to call up my team and be like, hey, I'm on, I want a break. Last year, I was probably just getting off of my first ever solo tour with my baby brother, Justin Park, and probably sleeping. <laughs> oh, last month, I just started my second tour, which I'm also st still currently on. I was probably playing a show on my 24 city tour, Tour X, with baby brother Justin, Megan Dia, and Justice Carity. <laughs> it's been a long tour. <laughs> Yesterday, yeah, I got off a plane and I did my hair and slept. Tomorrow, I am playing another show on my 24 city tour, Tour X, in LA at the Will Turn. I've always wanted to play the Will Turn because I pass by it all the time. My favorite boba shop is right across from the Will Turn. <laughs> yeah, go get some boba, go, go play, play a show, why not? Next week, I made an appointment about a month ago to work on my sleeve. I'm still indecisive of what I'm getting, but I'm getting something. I haven't written in a while where I wasn't thinking about things. Like I wanna, I wanna write mindlessly. That's what I wanna be doing. I really want to release this one project that I'm working on. The intention is like for my mom. I've been working on it for a while. I just wanna be working, working trying to save puppies. Wow. Me and my fans have definitely had this transparency with each other. I hope that there isn't this weird wall between like fan and artist. If you want to have a conversation with me, we can have a conversation. They were always very supportive. I know for them it was really hard, though I was you know, getting all this attention. They were also getting a lot of attention and I know that that's a burden that they didn't ask to carry. I really thank them for being supportive and just patient with me throughout this whole thing. Let's be realistic, like I, I'm, I'm in a huge K-pop group, starting you know, with my own team. The expectations that people put on me and the ones that I put on myself, I get lost in a lot and I think that's when I get a lot of anxiety and I just start freaking out a lot. It's not necessarily failing, it's just actually screwing up. Yeah. Scared of that a lot. I was always scared and I was always hesitant. Little Amber is like, uh, I'm not talking to you. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna, you know, stay in my bubble. Starting in K-pop, I've learned that communication is also a really, really extremely tough but necessary thing in any relationship, whether it's professional or personal. <laughs> it sounds like I'm dating music. It shows that connection between people. It doesn't even have to be said or understood. It's about the feeling of music. People are just vibing with each other through that feeling and then also taking an interest in a different culture, in a different language. I'm one of those examples too. I didn't even understand Korean. <laughs> and look at where I am now. K-pop opened a lot of opportunities for people and I think that's, that's amazing. For a long time, my definition of success was somebody else's definition of success. Getting number one, getting all this money, getting famous, getting recognition. All those years, I maybe kind of felt like Maybe I'm just like a fucking show pony. Sorry, I discussed. When me and my group finally did our first concert together, seven years after we debuted and 
It was a two and a half hour long concert of like 34 songs. It wasn't about like us performing, it was the connection that we made. The people weren't just sitting and watching. They were like, whoa, you know? And I felt that. That I think was like my first taste of success. Don't chase money, don't chase fame. If you love it, do it. Try to love every step of the process. But, you know, I don't know, I'm just, just figuring it out. <laughs> Cut. Yeah, Mal. <laughs>